everybody, it's Emily back with another Grass River micro class. Uh, so today I went on an adventure and I am currently at the mouth of Shanty Creek. Um, Shanty Creek flows into Grass River. It's one of our three major tributaries to the river. Uh, so I'm pretty far upstream of the Grass River Center and where our boardwalk trails are, um, but still on Grass River Natural Area property. Um, so I came here today because I wanted to show you guys some really great emergent marsh habitat. Um, I wanted to film out by the river, uh, but it turns out it's a little too windy to film out um, right by the river today, so we're going to be tucked a little bit into the swamp. But that emergent marsh habitat that's really characterized by a lot of cattails, uh, that is perfect habitat for the bird we're going to be talking about today, which is a red-winged blackbird. Um, Red-winged blackbirds, their return um, is one of the earliest signs of spring in northern Michigan. They're possibly our earliest returning migratory bird. They usually show up um, in the beginning of March, but you know, it can vary a little bit. Uh, there have been scattered reports of them throughout northern Michigan. I haven't seen or heard one quite yet um, at the time of this filming, um, but James, our education director, uh, saw or heard them at the end of Grass River Road on Thursday, so they are starting to show up. So red-winged blackbirds are pretty interesting little songbirds. Um, they've got some pretty awesome and unique um, mating habits that are that's going to be the focus of this video. So uh, first I should say that what's happening now is that the males are returning um, and the males are probably what you're familiar with red-winged blackbirds looking like, you know, the, pretty much the name says it all, red-winged blackbird. Um, the females look totally different. They're pretty streaky and brown and sort of dull colored uh, so they can really blend in with the marsh vegetation. Um, and the females have not returned yet because they will not return until the first real insect hatch happens because the females need that really high protein diet and also high calcium diet in order to prepare for laying eggs. Um, males don't need that so much so they can subsist on, you know, the remnants of seeds or grain um, that are around until the insects uh, get here or hatch. Um, so so they so they exhibit what's called sexual dimorphism. They look different, the males and the females, um, which is a common characteristic of their very interesting mating system. So most birds are monogamous, right? One male, one female. Um, not so with red-winged blackbirds. They are what's called polygynous. So they have one male living in a territory and lots of females living in his territory and the male mates with many females. So it's one male to many females. Um, in fact, red-winged blackbird males can have up to 15 females nesting in their territories, but usually it's closer to about five. And this polygynous mating system actually drives a lot of red-winged blackbird behavior. So first of all, it explains why the males return so much earlier than the females do, um, because it is critical for a male's mating success that he stakes his claim to a really high quality territory. Because remember, if there's one male to up to 15 females, that means not nearly every male is going to be able to mate. So the male needs to get here really quick, really fast, set up shop at a great territory, because as it turns out, female red-winged blackbirds actually choose um, who they're going to mate with based on the territory. So based on things like how much food, uh, how much cover is there for a nest, uh, is there good access to water for drinking and bathing, they key in on those details much more than they do the actual male who's holding the territory. Um, Another behavioral uh, aspect of red-winged blackbird life that polygyny really explains um, is their red wings and what they do with them, the males. Um, there's tons of male-male competition between um, red-winged blackbirds because as you can imagine, you know, again, not every red-winged blackbird male mates and so they've got to get really great territories and keep other males out of their territory in order to successfully breed. Um, so there's a lot of studies that actually back this up um, that the, back up the claim that those red patches on their wings, those are actually totally related to male-male competition 
and they're not actually related to female choice. And by that, I mean that usually when we think of really bright colored birds, we think, oh, that male must be bright colored, so it attracts a mate, so it attracts a female. That's actually not the case with red-winged blackbirds. They have that red shoulder patch to, um, it acts as a signal to other males that, hey, I'm a male red-winged blackbird, and um, I own this territory, it's already spoken for. Um, so some research to back that up uh, includes, let's see, there was one study that showed that 60% of red-winged blackbirds um, who had their red epaulets um, dyed black by the researchers, 60% of those birds um, were kicked out of their territories, had territory takeovers. Um, also, the uh, amount of territorial territoriality um so like aggression behaviors um exhibited by a male um in the breeding season is directly proportional to the size of the epaulet in the male that's encroaching on his territory so if a male an outside male is coming in it's got a huge really bright red epaulet the male that's on that territory will be more aggressive um than it would be if that epaulet of the encroaching male was smaller um, and then also, just anecdotally, male red-winged blackbirds totally try to hide their red epaulets when they are encroaching in other male territories. Um, you know, they might, they might visit another territory for, you know, something like foraging, some behavior unrelated to mating, uh, but they do try to hide their red um, epaulets so as to not provoke the male that, whose territory it is. Um, and then also, what really is the clincher here that lets us know that those red epaulets have to do with male-male territoriality and not so much females um, attracting females is that of those birds that the experimenters um, blackened their epaulets, a lot of them still attracted mates and still successfully mated. Um, it, they just didn't have territories. And you might be confused by that. I should say that they're in red winged blackbird society. There is a lot of uh, extra pair copulations that happen. And by that, I mean that the females, even if they're in a male's territory, they sometimes go outside um, to find other mates sort of secretly. Um, so, so males that had no black ep or no red epaulets did mate, but they just didn't have as high of a success of mating because they didn't have 15 females in their harem. So you might be wondering why red-winged blackbirds have this polygynous mating system if it's so uncommon. You know, if only 2% of bird species across the world have um, a polygynous mating system and the vast majority of them are monogamous, what about red-winged blackbirds or the habitat that they live in selected for this weird, really uncommon um, system of mating? And it has everything to do with the fact that the marshes and the cattail patches that they live in are very patchy. They're very clumped. They're very contained little patches of habitat. Very different from something like a hardwood forest or a rich conifer swamp that just goes on for acres and acres and acres. Um, so that means that when red-winged blackbirds return to their breeding grounds, um, they are forced into, you know, a very small amount of habitat. And, you know, there might be a lot of these patches of cattails across the landscape, but each one of them is quite small. And that makes it so that it's really easy for an individual male to control one single patch, or at least, a, you know, a part of a patch, a fraction of a patch of these um, cattail marshes. And that also explains why females, you know, are so keyed in on the characteristics of the habitat um, because that habitat is pretty scarce, pretty patchy. Um, and so this is a type of polygyny known as resource defense polygyny. And interestingly, you guys, um, another one of our marsh birds that we have here at Grass River called the marsh wren, they actually are also polygynous. So they actually fall into this 2% of birds across the world um, as well. And wouldn't you know it, they live in these emergent marsh cattail patches too. So now you know all you wanted to know about the life and times of red-winged blackbirds. But if you have questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next week. But keep your eyes and ears peeled for those red-winged blackbirds showing up, those male red-winged blackbirds showing up in the next couple days. All right, bye.